What's up guys, Grim here. If you left a comment in the comment section of the last weekend video that I did, then you are entered into the giveaway of four separate Rexes that I'm giving away. And as usual, if you're somebody that has used my referral link to make your Rift account in the description below my videos, then you are eligible to win 10 times that amount of Rex if you're one of the winners. And the four winners are, Congratulations, we'll be sending your Rex to you just shortly. Thank you to everybody that has donated and spurred these giveaways. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have a donation link in the description below the video. And anytime that you make a donation, it will spur giveaways for other people on the channel. Thanks for the support, guys. What's up today we're going to go over a primalist preserver build and preserver is very strong in pvp i'm not too sure how good he is in pve but this is particularly a uh, pvp guide here and it is very very strong preserver is so hard to kill in warfronts uh, especially as you get geared up it's just insane how good it is so let's go over the build and let's see if you guys are going to enjoy the way that I've been running it. All right, so let's open up the soul tree here. And if you'd like to see this build on a website so that you don't have to pause the video or squint at your screen or any of that stuff, I will have all the details of this build in the description below the video. So go ahead and scroll down there. I'll have not only a link to the build where you can see the entire soul build and the masteries, but also I'll have all the macros down there as well so that if I update any of the macros, all of them will be updated down there. So, all right, this is a 31 preserver build with four in Dervish and four in the Vulcanist. And the four that I went into on Dervish is Might of the Earth, and that will increase our attack power and weapon damage by 16%. And then we went four into Furious Power in Vulcanist, and that's also going to increase our attack power and weapon damage by 16%. Of course, you fill up the whole pri uh, Preserver tree all together, all 31 points. All right, on the Masteries, we went with level 61, Exhilaration, level 62, Forest Matron, level 63, Earth Sign Tenacity, level 64, Ethereal Meditation, and level 65, we went with Ancestral Force. The buffs that you use with this build are actually very slim. There's actually just one buff that you're going to be using for the most part, and that is Font of Vitality. You can use the buffs from the other soul trees, such as the Dervish and the Vulcanist, but Font of Vitality will give you the maximum benefit because it allows your critical hits with an ability, as in your heals as well, to reduce the cast time of the next thing that you do. So one of the main spells that we're going to be casting is needing to have a reduced cast time to make it the most effective. So we're always looking for this Font of Vitality proc and it's very important in this build. But if you're just set on using one of the other buffs, they can work as well. The macros that I use are as follows, but I must stress that once you get used to this build, a lot of times you want to separate abilities out of the macros that I give. Most of the macros that I provide to you guys are made to let you get used to a build, and also you can play with the same macros forever on, especially if you're somebody like me that uses a lot of different builds and you swap back and forth. The macros that I have are going to make it a lot easier for you to play this style. But if you play a lot of Preserver, you probably want to separate a lot of the abilities and micromanage things and your healing output will be increased. The first macro that we're going to be using is pretty much our spam macro and this is going to be casting Inundate, which that is pretty much our main ability in Preserver. Uh, it is really good, but it has a cast time. So whenever you're using it, you want to use it only whenever you have a reduced cast time with one of the abilities that we're going to be talking about as such as the font of vitality if you get the proc from that that's whenever you want to cast in a date so whenever you're standing still it'll cast in a date but whenever you're moving it will cast either ancestral force or nurture so this is pretty much something that you can move all the time and cast with but whenever you get the proc that you need in order to reduce the cast time of inundate, that's whenever you stand still and cast this. 
The second macro that we're going to be using is our stacks macro. Now you want to be putting blossoms on your target and these abilities right here will do that. And the more stacks of blossoms that you have on your target, the better the heals are going to be overall. So this is one of the things that we do right at the beginning and we put stacks on somebody, then we start healing them and the healing output is increased greatly. All right. So our third macro is our cleanse here. Now this is, basically all of our cleanses in one macro so if you want to micromanage this make sure to separate them but this makes it easy to where you're going to be casting a really strong cleanse every time that it's off a of cooldown and then you'll be using the weaker cleanses as you go along if they're if you don't have any that's off cooldown all right so our burst ability here is going to be casting our primal avatar of the deer spirit and this is going to make us basically spam in a date and it's going to be really instant pretty much and it's going to put out a lot of healing output and it's a really good burst ability trust me all right so then we have our charge macro here now i put this in here because there's just some situations where you're trying to get away and an enemy is between you and where you're trying to get to so if you go ahead and cast your charge you'll go ahead and charge at that target and then you can run past them and try to get away uh, you don't really want to use it offensively because this is not a melee build or something like that it's not even a dps build for the most part so don't use this offensively use it defensively you know charge at an enemy if you're trying to get to your target faster as in line of sight or something else all right then we have this macro here and this is basically just a way of putting our getaway abilities in one macro because this is going to be casting bound which is basically a teleport uh and also we're going to have charge mirror on here because it's it's a really good ability that increases our movement speed so we want that in there as well all right so this is the panic button here this is the one that i made if you get in bad situations spam this and it's going to heal yourself for as much as it can so all as you can see all of the abilities are pretty much at self targets so it's all going to be you focused uh, you pretty much have to have these kind of buttons whenever you're a, a healer uh if you're not like super experienced as a healer because having a self cast panic button will save your butt so much and if you just switch to healer and war fronts whenever it's needed and stuff like that then yeah you know have this button spam it stay alive the abilities on my bar down here is our spam macro which is going to be primarily for inundate we have our stacks macro we have cultivate and then we have our burst macro we have our cleanse macro charge macro the panic button uh our bound button basically our getaway macro that we made break free on a separate button up at the top we have fury blast and this is an instant attack ability and we need that kind of stuff on a healing build because if somebody's capping a flag right in front of you you can't just let them do it and you don't want cast time abilities whenever you're trying to interrupt so we put fury blast on here you can of course cast something like nurture in order to interrupt them but I don't like doing that because it's a channeled ability and really I'm just wanting to interrupt them and go right back to healing. I don't want to cast the full channeled ability. So I'm not really trying to kill, I'm trying to interrupt so that's why we put Fury Blast on the bar. Alright so then we have Flash Flood and this is basically going to be our uh, AoE that's going to knock everybody back so it's pretty nice. All right, then we have uh, Emanate Life, and this is going to bring people back to life, and it is a battle res. And then we have Invigorate here, which this is basically going to be a damage reduction and make us heal up quite a bit. I generally save this ability for myself because keeping a healer alive is generally a lot more important than letting a DPS die because the healer is going to keep everybody else alive, and a lot of times these DPS, they... They're going to get in bad situations and not get out of it. So DPS dying is just part of it. You got to keep the healers alive and they'll keep everybody else alive. So keeping yourself alive is very important, but you can also use this ability on other healers. I highly recommend that as well. How to play this build is rather simple. It's just a matter of getting your stacks onto your target and then waiting for your inundate procs for the most part and then spamming heals in between. 
So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to cast is our stacks macro. And this is going to cast Deluge, which that is going to put five stacks of blossoms onto our target right off the bat. Now, if this ability is on cooldown, it has a 10 second cooldown. Afterwards, your stacks are going to be used by, uh, built up by casting Nurture. And then the next time that you get your stacks macro after you've used Nurture, if uh, the 10 second cooldown is over, you'll get five stacks again. So we're going to go ahead and hit our stacks macro. And as you can see to the left of my character, I have K-Alert showing the five stacks and then it has a countdown on how long it's going to last. Now I'll have all the K-Alerts in the description below this video as well. So you can go down there and copy and paste into your K alerts and yeah, just get the ones that I'm using. So we're going to put stacks up and then right afterwards, we're going to cast cultivate because this is going to be our heal over time. And it's also going to cause a proc to happen for our end of date to be able to cast on a reduced cast time. So let's go ahead and cast our stacks, cast our cultivate. And as you can see to the right of my character, you see where it's counting down 11, 10. It's basically telling me that I can cast in the date at a reduced cast time. So whenever I hit it, you see it cast very fast. Now don't really pay attention to our focus bar down there. It's not important with this particular build. This is like one of the only primalist builds that you don't have to worry about where your bar is at. You can be in all fury, all cunning. It doesn't matter. You're just going to heal people and it's going to be good. So basically we're wanting to go with putting stacks on our target, put our cultivate up, and then we can stand still and cast our inundate. And whenever the inundate does not have a particular proc, that's whenever we get to move in and cast a nurture and ancestral force. And I'll show you guys as we're moving, you see ancestral force is casting and then it goes right into nurture the next time that we're hitting our spam button. So that's basically how it works. You go from stacks, the heal over time, Stand still anytime you get a font of vitality proc and that will show to the right of the character as well with my K alerts. Or if you get the proc from cultivate whenever you cast it, it will reduce the cast time of your end of date as well. And that's whenever you need to cast that main ability and make sure that you're standing still or it's not going to cast. All right, so that's the normal rotation. We're going to talk about the other things such as the burst macro. This is going to be so important in your healing because it's going to pop your primal avatar of the deer spirit, which is going to increase your critical hit chance by 100% for 12 seconds. So that's going to make your heals critical hit. For 12 seconds that is huge that also makes it to where stacking crit power on this particular build is a must you have to go with crit power on this so make sure that on your gear you're trying to hit that 40 percent soft cap on crit power and then put all the rest into attack power after that but it's also going to fire off other abilities such as your essence flow right here, which is going to increase the healing of your next three in a date abilities. Also make them instant and yeah, it's going to be a ton of healing. So it's going to fire off lots of abilities, make it to where whoever you're targeting is, they're going to go to full health really, really fast and you need to target somebody else because it's just going to be over healing after that. So yeah and it's a very very powerful macro here all right and then you got your cleanse which you have really powerful cleanses as in the uh, uh you have restore here which is going to remove all curses diseases and poisons heal the target for one percent of the preserver's max health for each debuff dispelled and it's got a 20 second cooldown and then you got the regular cleanse here which is just going to remove one uh dot or curse or whatever and then you got here where it's going to remove curses from up to 10 people so you got a lot of cleanses going on with this particular uh soul here and it's going to be a very good cleansing machine put it that way all right, so then you have your charge macro, but like I said, do not use it as an offensive thing if you need to target somebody and then charge in and then run past them so you can get to your line of sight or whatever you need to do. Or if you're trying to get to a particular flag or something and you see an enemy fighting, you might want to charge them and then run right past them because you know they're busy with somebody else. All right, so then we have our port macro, which this is going to basically uh let's see here port us ahead and then if we hit it again it'll do our charged mirror which is going to increase our movement speed so 
Uh, I believe that might be a planar ability. Uh, yeah, it is. So make sure that you have that if you have it in the macro. If you don't have that planar ability, don't make the macro. Just put bound on your on your bars down here. All right, so then we have Fury Blast. Uh, of course, use it as an interrupt. It's not a primary attacking ability. Don't use it like one. Uh, then you got your knockback here, which this is going to knock back uh, several people at once. You know, it hits everybody there and knocks them back. So, yeah, really good if you're playing in a Codex match or something like that. It's going to knock everybody off the cliff. Uh, then you have your battle res. Make sure that you're putting this to good use, particularly in CQ if you're actually in that with uh, Preserver. And then Invigorate. Huge, huge ability right here. You uh, make sure that you use it on yourself if you're in trouble. If you want to use it on another healer, use it then as well. It'll reduce the damage that they take as well as make it to where they're going to heal up. So yeah, huge ability. Make sure that you're using it on the right people. If you just use it on a random DPS that is sitting in the middle of the enemies and taking all the damage, you know, don't save that person. There's no saving that person. You're just going to waste your abilities on them. Put it that way. Unless you promised them you were pocket healing them or something. So, yeah. Make sure to use it wisely. All right, that's the build, guys. Like I said, if you get really experienced with Preserver, make sure that you take your abilities and separate them out if you want to. If you find my particular macros work for you, stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. And if I update any of the macros, I'll make sure to put the updated versions in the description below as well. So make sure that you're checking down there anytime that you think that I may have made improvements on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. As usual, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.